Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to perform a simple linear regression and a multiple linear regression in Excel. If you want to follow along, the data set that I'm using here is available in the notes to the, to the video here. You can click on it and download it and follow along if you'd like to. The first thing you need to be aware of in order to do a linear regression here and get um, all the output you'd really want is to make sure you have an um, add-in um, that's called data analysis. If when clicking on your data tab you don't see this, then you need to follow the steps, steps that I'm going to show you briefly now. Um, by the way, I'm doing this in um, 365. In case you have a different version, it may look a little bit different. So what you can do is click on File here, and when you go down to the very bottom where it says Options. When Options open, you want to come over here to Add-ins. You want to click on both of these here. Okay, you want, you want to add both of these. But if you just click on one of them, it'll be enough. Um, click on Go down below, and then here you can check on these two. So you want to check on these two, um, click OK. And when you've done that, it's going to immediately add that option for you, which is what you need to be able to do to do a lot of the more statistical um, analyses in a way that's a little bit more pleasant and helpful to you. So let's click on um, data analysis. I have this data set here. It's got a set of um, 20 fictional scale items, Likert type items. Right here is the sum of those items. We're going to use that as our dependent variable. We're going to use um, age here as our independent variable um, in a simple linear regression. And then we'll go on and I'll show you how to do it with multiple linear regression. It's very similar. So go ahead and click on data analysis here. And you'll see here all the various options you have. We're going to click on regression and then click on OK. This particular interface will pop up for you. It's what you need. You can either type the range in yourself or you can select to the side. If you have column labels like I have at the top, you can click on labels. And then if you click on labels, when you, when you select, let me just make sure you've clicked on the Y. When I select on the Y variables, it'll know that that's just the, the column label for that column. So I go ahead and select those. Then I'm going to pick my X. One thing that's very important to be aware of here is that it does not handle missing data. If you have a cell with missing data in it, um, um, this is the wrong column. I'm going to go back and, and go um, use the age column. If you have a, a missing value somewhere in your in your data, then you need to deal with that um, either by imputing ahead of time, deleting that row, or sorting your data so that when you select here, it doesn't include the missing value, that you only include rows with complete data, both, you know, for the Y and the X, they need to match, have the same number of rows, and it needs to have complete data in all of those. Okay, so I've got those um, um, set here, and again, you could have just typed them in. If you want to have confidence intervals around your your coefficients, then you're going to click on that one. And then let me just show you the various options. This is where your output goes. If I were to click on this output, I could just give it one cell, and that would be the upper left-hand corner of where the output goes. I usually use a new worksheet, and it'll pop up and open and create a new worksheet there, or you can do a whole new workbook if you want. These options down here are helpful to you and when you want to look at your uh, um, your various assumptions and so forth. You, if you click on this residuals button or the standardized residuals, it'll give you both your residuals and your predicted values in a column within that, in columns within the new um, sheet that it creates. You can also have it just create residual plots. The line fit plot is the actual, you know, the plot of the actual regression line for your data. And you can look at normal probability plots. So any of those options are things that you can add in so that you can look at your assumptions as well. So go ahead here and click on OK. And it'll pop right over to that new um, sheet. And you'll see here that it's just got the standard column width, so you may need to adjust your column widths to see some things. It's got my plots over here as well. We'll look at those in a minute. Just wanted to show you. Let's make that column a little wider. 
you can see that it's giving me my, um, my basic output you would get out of any software, multiple R, R squared, and, and adjusted R squared. It's giving me the ANOVA table that you would typically use more often with a multiple linear regression than with a simple linear regression. With This is the p-value right here. Um, for that, here is your basic output with your coefficients, the standard error, the t, p-value, and so on. And you can see again that it's, it's typically what you'd get out of software you may need to adjust your column widths. Down below <clears throat> is where you're going to get your um, residuals. These are predicted values and residuals here. And if you use, um, so you can use that to look at, you know, make whatever kinds of plots you particularly want. Okay. The only ones kinds it gives you are the kinds that I'm showing you here. Okay, here is the residual plot. Whoops, don't mean to mess that up. You can resize them. You can edit them to do a different, slightly different style. So this gives you basically the residual plot will give you your X versus the residual. Okay, and if you have multiple regression, it'll give you a separate plot for each X versus the residual. Um, over here, <clears throat> this is going to be my basic plot of my regression line. Okay, and that's that the orange line there. And down here is a normal probability plot that you can look at to look at that assumption. So I'm not going to talk about theory and things here. I just want to let you know that's available. Um, I might want to look at a, just a histogram of my residuals. If that was the case, I just use this column of residuals here and create my own histogram. But I'm going to, I'm not sure that here. I'll have another video soon that shows you how to do a histogram in Excel. So that's the basics if we of a simple linear regression. Now let's go back here and I'll show you how to do a multiple linear regression. It's really quite similar. What we're going to do here is we're going to use gender and age as our, as our two X's. And I want you to note that I have a missing value here in gender. So that becomes problematic. Again, there's a variety of ways you can deal with that. Um, you can just delete the row, but you know, then you lose the rest of your data. So if you did that, of course, you'd want to save your data with that gone. Um, you could um, do a select, you know, a, um, a filter and filter those out and then put, put the data into a new sheet that is not missing that value. Um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a sort. Um, so I'm going to come over and sort on gender. Okay. And by doing that, that would, that means that I've got my missing value here last. So I'm only going to use up to row 117 now in my, in my analysis. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, you can just kind of click anywhere. Click on data analysis, click on regression, and you see it has the values in here from before. And so I can just take those out if they're different. I'll just take them out all together here. And I'm going to select these values. Now remember, I'm only going up to row 117 because I don't want to include the row that has the missing value. And I put that in the X instead of the Y by mistake. I can just move that. And then I can go up here and I can just, because the columns that I'm using are next to each other, and I recommend you do that because it's a little bit, whoops, I've got to do gender and age. It's a little bit simpler to deal with that way. Go ahead and select those, okay? And make sure that they both have 117 rows included. Here I have row column V and column W, and that's column Y. And I include these. I'm going to just do a new worksheet again. I'll keep the same options so you can see how it looks. Click on OK. And I have again another new worksheet created. And you'll see the same types of output. Pull that over a little so you can see that. Um, that's my p-value. Now I have two rows in this table um, with all the various statistics I need. I still am going to have my predicted values and residuals. And now you'll see I have just one normal probability plot because that's looking at the, the normal distribution of the residuals. I have um, just age versus the sum here on a plot. Okay. 
And then I, it's done the same for gender. And of course, genders only has two values. And so the, you know, this is what it's going to look like um, when we plot something that's got two values for the X and a range of values for the Y. And you can see if you were to put a line through it, there would be a tiny bit of slope there, but it's not statistically significant. So it's going to give me the, the line fit as if I had done simple re regression for each of these. And, but this is for the overall multiple regression. And then I see that I have gender versus residuals and age versus residuals. You probably want, you may want predicted value versus residuals. If that's the case, then you're going to have to use this columns of data here and make your own plot. And but I'll have, I have other videos that will show how to do that. So I hope that's helpful in showing you basically how to do a simple and multiple linear regression here in Excel.